The Click Wi-Fi connection is wireless. A static IP address must be set for the client as well as all the servers. In Modbus TCP communication, the controller sending the command is called the client. The server controller will respond to the commands from the client. In Modbus RTU or serial, the client is referred to as the master and the server is the slave. An easy way to remember this is the two S's, server, slave. We can start the Click PLC programming software twice and connect the client and the server PLCs. Using the main menu, select Setup, Wireless Port. Connection to the wireless LAN basic configuration for SSID and password can be entered. This is the name of the wireless network and password to connect it. See the Click Plus established communication post for more details on connecting Wi-Fi and provisioning through Bluetooth. A static IP address must be entered for the WLAN or wireless LAN port on the client and the server. This IP address is used to determine where the message will be directed using Ethernet. TCP IP refers to the transmission control protocol and internet protocol, which provides the transmission media for Modbus TCP messaging. The primary function of TCP is to ensure that all packets of data are received correctly while IP makes sure that the messages are correctly addressed and routed. TCP IP is a transport protocol and does not determine what the data means or how the data is to be interpreted. Modbus TCP protocol will be the data and each click PLC will interpret this information. This is how information will be transferred between the two click PLCs using Wi-Fi. The client click PLC will use address 192.168.1.130 and the server click PLC will use address 192.168.1.131. Select OK to return to the main screen. Under the wireless port selection in the setup menu, select Modbus TCP. This Modbus TCP setup window will allow us to set parameters around the protocol. We will leave the default settings for both the client and the server click PLCs. Ensure that the Enable the Modbus TCP server on the Click Remote I.O. PLC is selected. Our Click PLC network ports are now set up. As mentioned, all communications are initiated from the client PLC using the Modbus protocol. We will now look at the ladder logic program for the Click PLC client master. Our main ladder logic program will call a subroutine called Click PLC Wi-Fi Com. This subroutine will handle all the communications between the click controllers. The first two lines of the controller will use the send instruction to write information into the server unit. We will see that IP is set for 192.168.1.131. This unique address will ensure the message will get to the server on the network. Double clicking on the send instruction, we can look at more details. The Modbus function code is set for 15. This is used to write multiple coils. Our address type is set up for Modbus 984 addressing, and the starting slave address is 16685. The starting client address is C301. Call up the address picker from the main menu program. Select the slave Modbus address in the bottom right side of the address picker window. This will display the Modbus addresses of all the memory locations in the Click PLC. 16685 is the address for C301. Looking back at the send instruction, we are sending 50 bits. This means that bits C301 to C350 from the client PLC are being sent to bits C301 to C350 of the server PLC. Status flags are then set for the send instruction. We will use these for the timing of the communication. The first scan is used on the first rung to send the first 50 bits. The output flags on the first set send instruction will trigger the second send instruction. Our next send instruction will use the right multiple registers and the starting address will be 400301, which is DS301 in the Click PLC. We will write 50 registers. Registers DS301 to DS350 from the client PLC will be written to DS301 to DS350 of the server PLC. The 
flags from the second send instruction will now trigger the receive instruction. The receive instruction function code will read coil status. We will read 50 bits starting at 16735, which is address C351 of the server PLC, and write them into the client starting at C351. The output flags of this receive instruction will trigger the next receive instruction. We have two send and two receive instructions that now will pass 100 bits and words between the two click PLCs. We will read 50 registers starting at 400351, address DS351 of the server PLC and write them to the client starting at DS351. The output flags of this instruction will then trigger the first instruction again. The sending and receiving cycles uses the flag bits. If this cycle stops, we need to start cycling again. The leading edge of the last receive instruction triggers an internal bit. The normally closed of this bit will start a timer set for 1000 milliseconds or one second. The leading edge of this timer bit will then start under the first scan flag on the first rung. We will now ensure that the information will continue to be updated. A heartbeat is sent to the first bit we write to the click server PLC. This is used to tell the server if communication is still active. Even though we're cycling above with our commands, it may not mean that the information is being sent. There could be errors on a line and the server PLC will need to know this and react. The click client PLC will also need to know if the information is valid. We are looking at the leading edge of each of the ethernet error communication bits. This will trigger an internal bit. The normally closed of this bit will turn on a timer. The timer is set for 500 milliseconds. If the timer done bit is on and communications are okay, we can use this in other areas of the program. Returning to the main ladder logic of our click client PLC, we will implement some code to determine the throughput of our communications. When input X001 from our push button switch is on, this will turn on bit C302 and start a timer. Our remote click server will have the following code. This will read C302 and set C351. When bit C351 is read from the click client PLC, the value in the timer is then copied to DS3. DS3 will then contain the throughput value in milliseconds. The click server PLC does not need any code for communication to the client other than a heartbeat to ensure the transmission is valid. This is an asynchronous communication from the client. The heartbeat pulse comes from the client bit C301. Using the leading edge of this bit to turn on an internal bit, we use this normally closed internal bit as a condition for a timer. If the timer times out and the timer done bit comes on, we know communications has been lost. This can be used later on in your program. Call up the data view under monitor in the program tab of the navigation window on both the client and the server click PLC controllers. The client will write the first block of bits. You can see the heartbeat bit pulsing. The server will write the next block of bits so that the client can read. The following two blocks contain registers, one for the client to write and one for the server to write. Changing the bit or word status in one controller will reflect in the other. Download the program and documentation from the link below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.